So we just figured out from the snail and the alonia experiment that both animals and plants give off carbon dioxide um, to the abiotic matter in an ecosystem. And again, I don't know about you, but that was a little bit surprising to me about the Elodia, about the plants, because I knew they took in the carbon dioxide, but I didn't realize that they also released the carbon dioxide into the air or the water or those other abiotic matter sources within an ecosystem. So I'm going to ask that if you were surprised um, by that, like I was, that you pause the video and use this time um, to make any needed changes to show which parts of the ecosystem do and do not give off carbon dioxide. So if you had Elodia over here is, does not give off carbon dioxide, go ahead and pause the video and change that and move that over um, as it does in fact give off carbon dioxide as our snail and our Elodia experiment showed us. So now we're gonna figure out what to do with those decomposers. And we're going to turn to an article set called A Feast for Decomposers to help us do that. Um, so if you have access to the article set, um, you can pause the video at this time and I want you to just read the introduction. And as you read, you're gonna look for information that might help you figure out the investigation question. And if decomposers do give off carbon dioxide to the abiotic matter in the air or the water. If you don't have access to the article set, um, you can follow along with me right now as I just read the introduction. Again, considering our investigation question here of do decomposers like consumers and producers give off carbon dioxide. So I'm gonna go to my article and this is found here in activity four, if you're following along Amplify Online. And we're just gonna read the introduction. So imagine you're invited to a feast. When you get there, your host serves you droppings, dry brown leaves, bare bones, feathers, and a fallen tree. But you can't eat that. This is a feast for decomposers, not humans. Decomposers are fungi, bacteria, worms, and other small organisms that specialize in breaking down dead matter. I'm gonna underline or highlight here that last sentence um, because that's giving me that definition of what a decomposer is. It's things like fungi, bacteria, worms, other small organisms that specialize in breaking down dead matter. Decomposers can break down things that nothing else can. Bones, droppings, and other dead matter may not seem like food, but they contain materials that decomposers use for energy and growth. For example, Dead matter contains energy storage molecules that many decomposers use for cellular respiration. I'm gonna highlight that. As I don't know if I realized that dead stuff also contains energy storage molecules. Cellular respiration is a process that many organisms, including humans, use to release energy in order to survive. During cellular respiration, oxygen and energy storage molecules combine, releasing energy and giving off carbon dioxide. Energy storage molecules contain carbon, an important component of living things. Through cellular respiration, decomposers are able to release carbon found in dead matter, making it available to the ecosystem. Oh, that's important. Through cellular respiration, decomposers are able to release carbon found in dead matter, making it available to the ecosystem. So that means decomposers release carbon. That's what I've been trying to um, figure out here. De Without decomposers, this carbon would stay trapped in the dead matter. Decomposers don't just release carbon from dead matter, they also make other materials available to an ecosystem, such as nitrogen. Nitrogen is a critical component for plant growth. Decomposers may be small, but they play an important role in an ecosystem. To learn more about decomposers, read one or more of the chapters that follow. 
Um, you may do that if you like, but we're gonna stop here um, because this sentence kind of tells us exactly what we needed to know. Decomposers are able to release carbon found in dead matter, making it available through this process of cellular respiration. So that means decomposers do in fact release carbon and that means that carbon dioxide in the abiotic matter also can come from decomposers. So again, if you need to make a change to your chart from earlier, go ahead and do that. And I'm not sure. All right, there we go. So pause the video to make any needed changes to show that actually all of these parts of an ecosystem do give off carbon dioxide the producers, the consumers, and the decomposers alike. So as we reflect on lesson 2.1 today, before next time, share the evidence that you gathered today and your ideas about where carbon dioxide in the abiotic matter of ecosystems come from. And if you want to know more about decomposers, um, go ahead and complete activity five and amplify online. That's gonna have you look at that article set a little bit uh, further. I'll see you next time.